Hello. Today I have so many good books coming out in the month of February to tell you guys about. I'm sure you've heard of a lot of these, but some of them I haven't really heard talked about too much, so I'm dying to talk about them. I think I have 18 today, which is way more than came out in January that I was interested in. A few might already be out because of the way the days worked out for the month of February and this isn't coming out until February 3rd, I think. So I will do my best to put these in chronological order of the date that they are being released. I am using Goodreads information and if that is incorrect, I apologize in advance, but I'm sure a quick Google search could confirm or deny but I got my information from Goodreads. So being released on February 2nd, we have Into the Dark by Claudia Gray, which is a Star Wars High Republic novel. I still have to read Light of the Jedi, which I think just came out last month as well. I have so many Star Wars novels to catch up on and I'm just really, really excited about it. I rewatched some of the movies again recently and I've been diving back into the comics and it just has made me realize that there are so many of the books I wanna prioritize. They aren't always the most groundbreaking, but I like like the little bit of information that you glean from reading the books that you don't get from the movies. Just other key details that you don't get otherwise. So this new series of novels that's being released is really exciting. So while I have so many other ones that are backlist I want to get to, I am also always really excited about new Star Wars books coming out as well. So I wanted to mention this one. Also coming out on February 2nd is The Women's History of the Modern World. How Radicals, Rebels, and Every Woman Revolutionized the Last 200 Years by Rosalind Miles. And this is a nonfiction book. Basically, you know what it's about from the tagline. It says, a wickedly witty and very current history of the extraordinary female rebels, reactionaries, and the trailblazers who left their mark on history from the French Revolution up to the present day. And I don't read a lot of nonfiction, but this is something right up my alley. My feminist heart is just dying to get my hands on this book. I would love to listen to the audiobook of it, and I would also love to have it for my shelves. I love the color choices for the cover, and I am excited to hopefully learn a lot of things about a lot of women throughout history that I didn't know. And I'm just excited to learn about some important events that have taken place and to see females accomplishing things that they perhaps didn't get credit for at the time being. So I'm really excited about this and I wanted to mention it on the list. Next on February 2nd, we have Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. I think this is going to be a standalone adult sci-fi novel with comp titles of Ancillary Justice and Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I read Ancillary Justice, not the other. However, I don't mind some romance in my books every now and then. And my friend Jashana read this recently as well, I believe. I think it's a male-male romance, if I'm remembering correctly. So it sounds like more of a character-driven story story within the setting of an interplanetary war occurring or about to occur and there's murder mysteries. I don't know. I'm just, that's enough to make me intrigued. It has a freaking gorgeous cover and I'm just trying to pick up some new and under hyped books this year so that I don't have expectations going into them and just have something fresh and new and this book fits that exactly. Then on February 9th we have Fireheart Tiger by Alia de Bodard and this says this is a powerful romantic fantasy that reads like the Goblin Emperor meets Howl's Moving Castle in a pre-colonial Vietnamese-esque world. Are you here for that? Because I'm here for that. Love this cover as well. So this is a tour.com novella. I really don't wanna look more into the synopsis than that, especially with it being a novella, less than 200 pages, but that tagline alone has me intrigued enough to want to pick up this book. So I'll link all these books in the description box below. So if you want more information, you can check it out because you know I don't like to know too much information about the book before my reading experience so that it doesn't alter my enjoyment or expectations but this sounds fabulous. Next we have We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire by Joy McCullough. This is a young adult contemporary novel that I believe deals with feminism and exploring mental health. And I believe that this novel is written in prose and in verse, which is always something very intriguing to me. I've only read a couple novels written in verse and it is a spectacular reading experience. So if I can get my hands on the audiobook for this, that will definitely be the route that I will take because it's so impactful when it's being read to you, especially the parts in verse. From what I understand, our main character's older sister was raped and her rapist gets let off with no prison time. And she's dealing with feelings of guilt and also extreme 
feelings of wanting revenge on her sister's rapist. And I don't want to know too much more than that, but the themes of this book and the topics that are going to be discussed are something that's so important and I'm something I'm so passionate about. So I have really high hopes for this one and I'm excited to check it out, even though I think it will definitely be a very hard hitting novel with some content that is very hard to read. Okay, next on February 9th, we have Game Changer by Neil Shusterman, which sounds like a young adult sci-fi fantasy novel and I'm not too big of a fan of him. I've read a couple books by him in the past that I really enjoyed at the time, but they didn't stick with me that much. This just sounds like a concept I really enjoy. It sounds like our main character gets hit on the football field, but he's hit into another dimension and he's bouncing through all of these worlds that are not really his own. So he's sliding through all of these different universes, seeing different versions of them. But I think there's a risk of him like losing his reality if he doesn't return to it. I'm not too sure. The concept sounds very interesting to me. And I feel like Neil Schusterman is somebody who could execute this concept very well. So I have hopes that he will. And I'm very intrigued to see what other people have to say about it before I check it out. But I wanted to put it on your guys' radar in case you hadn't heard of it. Again, on February 9th, we have The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek. This is an adult historical retelling. It says, when a banished witch falls in love with the legendary trickster Loki, she risks the wrath of the gods in this moving subversive debut novel that reimagines North mythology. So I know that this book involves Odin and Loki and a witch who was sentenced to be burned and flees and falls in love with Loki. That's all I need to know. I love things in involving Odin and Loki and I really have not read that much. There are so many retellings I would like to get to so I'm really interested in seeing this debut author's take on Norse mythology. Also on February 9th, this date has been pushed back so many times, but we have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. And this is one that was on my radar last year that I think probably with the pandemic had to be pushed back until this year. So it's finally time. This is a new young adult fantasy novel. So people in this village have to go through a blood ceremony basically to see if their blood is red or gold. And our main character is hoping that her blood is red so she can fit in and be a part of her village. And on the day of the ceremony, she finds out that it's gold, which is a sign of impurity and the consequence is worse than death. And she gets the opportunity to leave her village with this woman and fight for the emperor with an army of girls that are like her. So I didn't look into it more than that because that sounds intriguing enough for me. And I love the themes that this seems like it will be exploring and I'm excited for it. And oh my God, you guys look at this cover. Beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. Again, on February 9th, one I'm so excited for that I just learned about very recently is The Iron Raven by Julie Kagawa, who is the author of The Shadow of the Fox, which is a trilogy that I love so, so, so very much. This is a young adult fantasy series that's starting, and I'm just gonna read you what Goodreads has to say so I don't mess it up. Robin Goodfellow, Puck, Prankster, Joker, Raven, Fool, King Oberon's right-hand jester from A Midsummer Night's Dream. The legends are many, but the truth will be known as never before, as Puck finally tells his own story and faces a threat to the lands of fairy and the human world unlike any before. With the Iron Queen, Megan Chase, and her prince consort, Puck's longtime rival Ash and allies old and new by his side, Puck begins a fantastical and dangerous adventure not to be missed or forgotten. That's all I know. That's all I care to know. I love Julie Kagawa and I love Faye stories. So, and I love trickster type characters. I'm not familiar with A Midsummer Night's Dream. That's probably blasphemy on book two, but um, maybe I should be before reading this or maybe I should wait till after. I'm not sure, but either way, I'm very excited. And I can't believe I hadn't heard about this before now. Also on February 9th, we have The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. This is an adult thriller mystery horror. So it says, welcome to Chapel Croft. 500 years ago, eight Protestant martyrs were burned at the stake here. 30 years ago, two teenage girls disappeared without a trace. And two months ago, the vicar of the local parish killed himself. And then the last paragraph says, but uncovering the truth can be deadly in a village where everyone has something to protect. Everyone has links with the village's bloody past and no one trusts an outsider because a reverend who is a single parent and his 14 year old daughter come to this town to try to make a fresh start. So I usually don't gravitate towards mystery thrillers, but the synopsis of this just really hooks me in and it sounds like it'll have a bit of a horror element to it. And I'm really excited to check this one out. I haven't really heard people talking about it as well. Also on February 9th is Rebel Daughter by Lori Benav Kaufman. And this is one I haven't heard anything about. I just found it when I was researching books that are coming out in February. And this is a new young adult historical fiction novel. I think about really 
learning who you are and kind of making your own path in the world. And it says this emotional and impassioned saga based on real characters and meticulous research seamlessly blends the fascinating story of the Jewish people with a timeless protagonist determined to take charge of her own life against all odds. This takes place in Jerusalem and she is sort of set on this path by her parents where she's supposed to be the dutiful daughter and she's also in love with a boy. And I'm just excited to hear more talk about this book and it sounds like a lot of research went into it and it sounds like something very different and we don't really get a lot of books with this historical setting so I'm very interested to see what this one will be about and how people are liking it. Moving to February 16th we have another young adult novel. It's a magical realism fantasy contemporary dealing with mental health aspects and that's what sucks me into it. Also the cover is just absolutely breathtaking. So I'm going to read you what Goodreads has to say. Never whistle at the northern lights, the story goes, or they'll sweep down from the sky and carry you away. 16-year-old Eileen Davis knows it's true. She was there 10 years ago on a frozen fjord in Svalbard, Norway, the night her mother whistled at the lights and then vanished. Now Ellie lives an ordinary life with her dad on Cape Cod, but when the northern lights are visible over Cape Cod for just one night, she can't resist the possibility of seeing her mother again. So she whistles and it works. Her mother appears with snowy hair, frosty fingertips, and a hazy story of where she's been all the, all these years and she doesn't return alone. Along with Ellie's mother's reappearance come strange impossible things. Narwhals swimming in Cape Cod Bay, meteorites landing in Ellie's yard, and three shadowy princesses with ominous messages. It's all too much too fast and Ellie pushes her mother away. She disappears again but this time she leaves behind a note that will send Ellie on a journey across continents to the northern tip of the world. Find me where I left you. Why haven't I heard anyone talk about this? This sounds amazing. This sounds so unique. I am learning I really like magical realism lately and I'm really excited to check this one out. I hope some of you will be checking it out too so we can talk about it because this just sounds so unique and interesting. Next on February 16th we have a middle grade fantasy and that is Cathedral of Bones by AJ Steiger. I am always jumping at the chance to find new middle grade fantasy stories because I absolutely love middle grade fantasy. So Simon Frost lives in a curious place where magic is used by the very best animists to do wondrous things like call upon imps, wraiths, and all manner of monsters to right wrongs, deliver justice, and accomplish feats no human could achieve. Simon Frost is not one of those animists, though he's been trying to become one for years. When a plea arrives from a distant hamlet, preyed upon by an abominable monster, Simon sees the opportunity to finally prove his worth. But upon arriving in the tiny village, Simon finds not just a monster, but a key to his past and a pathway into an unbelievable future. I don't know if you guys read a lot of middle grade, so if you kind of know the adventure type of story that middle grade fantasy novels typically have, but this sounds like it will be a fantastic one and I'm really excited about a new up and coming middle grade fantasy book. This is sort of cheating, but also on February 16th is The Galaxy and the Ground Within, which is the fourth book in the Wayfarers series by Becky Chambers. You will have seen on my February TBR, I'm reading The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but it's just exciting that the fourth book is coming out. I don't know if this is the last one or if she'll be continuing on, but all I need to know is character-driven sci-fi with a found family feeling. I know each book sort of follows its own cast of characters from my understanding. Either way, I'm just excited that this series is continuing and I'm excited for all of you guys who love it and wanted to put it on your radar as well. Also in my February TBR, Coming out on February 16th is A Court of Silver Flames, which is the fourth book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Mass, which I will be reading with some friends in the month of February as well. And if you guys haven't read A Court of Thorns and Roses or heard of it or heard of Sarah J. Mass, you're probably new to booktube. <laughs> um, if not, you know, it's a whole world and it has a big fan following and I'm really excited to be on it. If I'm being honest with myself, I'm very excited to see where the story is going following Nesta and Cassian and I know a ton of you guys are waiting for this book. I'm excited to read it in the month of February right when it's coming out so I can review it and talk about it with all of you right away or even if you read it later you can come back to see my review. So I'm really excited about this one and this is one I'm prioritizing. Next on February 16th we have We Are the Fire by Sam Taylor. This is also a young adult fantasy novel novel for fans of An Ember in the Ashes and The Legend of Spartacus. It says, in the cold, treacherous land of Vesema, children are stolen from their families by a cruel emperor forced to undergo a horrific transformative procedure and serve in the army as magical fire-wielding soldiers. Pran and Oksana, both taken from their homeland at a young age, only have each other to hold on to in this heartless place. 
Pran dreams of one day rebelling against their oppressors and destroying the empire. Oksana only dreams of returning home and creating a peaceful life for both. I'm gonna stop there. I love that trope of somebody who's just sort of complying and wants to go back to their normal life and not really create a ruckus and just sort of follow the rules and obey to survive in comparison to the person who wants to fight back and stand up for themselves. So the comp titles were pretty interesting to me. It has a gorgeous cover and it sounds like tropes I usually enjoy. So I wanted to put this one on your guys' radar just in case it sounded interesting to you too. On February 16th, we finally have an adult fantasy that I was not aware of until I saw it on Jess's channel from Stars Above Jess, who I will link. I love her channel. If you don't watch her already, go check her channel out. And that is The Black Coast by Mike Brooks. So this is the start of a series filled with war dragons, armored knights, seafaring raiders, dangerous magic, and lots of battles. And that is like enough keywords to make me excited. I'm going to link it in the description box so you guys can read the rest of the synopsis below if you want. But this sounds freaking fabulous. This was not even on my radar until just a couple days ago. And I'm so excited for this book coming out. It's the start of a new series, but it's one that I really am excited and... <laughs> I used to always prioritize backlist fantasy and I'm kind of scarred by a recent experience I had. So I'm really looking forward to some new fantasy series starting. And this one sounds excellent. Last but not least, on February 23rd, we have A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. And this is the first book in a new young adult fantasy series as well. These covers are just so on point, you guys. Some young adult fantasy covers this year. Oh my gosh, they're so brilliant. I love them. This is an urban fantasy with comp titles of The Cruel Prince and City of Bones. Those might not be my favorite things ever, but I think it has the potential to make for a really cool new fantasy story or a unique take on it. This thrilling urban fantasy is set in the magical underworld of Toronto that follows a queer cast of characters racing to stop a serial killer whose crimes could expose the hidden world of fairies to humans. Choose your player the ironborn half fae outcast of her royal fae family, a tempestuous fury exiled to earth from the immortal realm and hellbent on revenge, a dutiful fae prince determined to earn his place on the throne, the prince's brooding guardian burdened with a terrible secret. That's all I wanna know. I cannot promise I'm gonna get to this one. Well, who are we kidding? I can't promise I'm getting to any of these. Urban fantasy is usually not my jam, but I love when they give you the cast, the list of characters in the synopsis and they hook me in with those and this one did a good job of that. So it's definitely on my radar and I will be keeping an eye out for what everyone's saying to determine whether I'm gonna pick it up or not. But as you guys know, this is not a list of books that I'm getting to because that would be wild. First of all, I could never read all these in February and this is like a quarter of my TBR for the year, but I like to do these so that you guys can see some up and coming releases for the current month to be excited about and maybe put something on your radar that you didn't know about beforehand. So what did I miss? What are you guys excited about that is coming out in the month of February? I would love to hear. Did you learn about any new books from this video? I would also love to hear that. And which release from February are you most excited for? Let's talk about it in the comments. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.